Lighting is an integral component in creating a successful image. In cinema, the careful arrangement of artificial light can do wonders for a shot, and this is especially visible in how actors are lit. In film lighting, there are basic applications of light that can serve as our toolkit for our renders. Today we'll be talking a bit about these elements, with the help of a 3D facsimile of Dev Patel's stunt double for The Green Knight. The Key Light Key lights describe and define objects in a scene. In 3D, we can think of the default light in our scene as a working key light, as it exists to describe our geometry by indicating the light and shadow regions that make our subjects read clearly. A chiaroscuro effect in a render can be achieved with a single key light, and the angle of the key light can represent a primary light source in the scene and determine the mood of the shot. The fill light. Fill lights soften the contrast of key lights and add more definition to the shadow areas of a subject that were created by the key light. This commonly places the fill lights opposite the key, but it doesn't always have to be this way. We can use fill lights to represent secondary light sources in the scene or bounced light on our subject. Fill lights are usually softer and dimmer than the key light, and if the key light is colored, the fill light can have a complementary color to the key to stylistically describe the shadow areas of a subject. The backlights. Backlights light the subject from behind and are usually employed to add definition to a character's hair. If the backlight is positioned so that it also illuminates the side of an object, it is known as a kicker. A backlight that illuminates the contour of a subject is known as a rim light. Ambient lights. Ambient lights are the natural light bounces that occur in the physical world. HDRI maps of overcast environments or bouncing light off of a reflector in the scene would be the definition of an ambient light. So now we've had a look at each of these lights inside of our study scene here, and hopefully you now have an overview of how you might light your own scene using these different light types. Let's talk a bit about the properties of lights in 3D. The hardness or softness of lights. Hard lights give a punchy quality to objects, lending more contrast to a subject or scene. The transition from light to shadow is direct, and can give a graphic quality to an object. Soft lights provide gradations from the light areas to the shadow areas, that enfold objects in a subtler and more graceful way. The biggest way to control the hardness or softness of a light is its size compared to the subject. By reducing the size of your light, you concentrate it on a particular direction, making it less likely to make its way around the surface. Increasing your light source does the opposite, which by definition creates a softer light. In Blender, you can control this property by adjusting either the radius or size parameters of your light objects. The overall brightness of your scene is an important thing to consider, and one way to make sure that you aren't overblowing any region of your shot is by using Blender's false color mode and watching out for red or clipping colors. You can think of the color legend as you would in Blender's weight painting mode, where red signifies the maximum value and blue the minimum. The more regions in the red, the less detail you'll see in those regions. Adjust your light sources until there is only red in the strongest incidence of light, or better yet, until your strongest incidences are just at the cusp of orange to red or even less bright if you're looking to create a lower key picture. But before I go, let's have a look at this scene with my attempt at recreating the lighting from the movie teaser. As you can see, this shot is a little unconventional, but to me at least is visually arresting. The premise of the film is based on Sir Gawain from Arthurian legend, who was bound by a code of honor to embark on a quest that would almost surely result in his demise. In that context, the lighting in this shot, in my opinion, puts emphasis on his garments and modicums to create the kingly virtue that he, like every knight of the round table, is defined by. So the reason I chose this particular shot is because I wanted to emphasize that while it's important to have some knowledge of these lighting principles, these are ultimately just guidelines, so feel free to bend and twist them to serve the story behind an image or a shot. So with that, I'll say I hope this was useful, and as always, happy rendering.